Hey guys, Sarah Bella's Loving Embrace here. Back again with another installment of Skullgirls Guides, or Skugs for short. On today's episode, we're going to cover team building. We'll go over team sizes and how to build them. So without further ado, let's just hop in. The first thing you may notice when booting up the character select screen is you can actually choose the amount of characters on your team. Either one super powerful character, two high powered characters, or three normal powered characters. The difference may seem obvious at first glance, but there's a surprising amount of nuance when deciding on a team size. So let's go over each ratio and talk about their pros and cons. Before we get into it fully though, I just want to say that all three ratios are very viable in tournament. This year's EVO had two solos and a duo player in top 8. Is it harder to win with solo Beowulf compared to a team filled with top tiers? Absolutely. You're playing solo Beowulf. But if Dude Guy can do it at the biggest Skullgirls event to date, then you, as a new player, shouldn't worry too much about it. Just pick the character you like and have fun. To start things off, let's talk about solos. Solo characters are really strong in the traditional sense. They have really high life and do insane damage. Pretty much any character solo can two-touch any character in a three-man team. But she's incredibly dead. There is a super coming behind that. Even characters with low damage can do the DPS when playing alone. However, despite what big band players would like you to believe, damage isn't everything. The main downfall of solos is a lack of options compared to other team sizes. They lack a ton of mechanics that teams have, and not having an assist means the weakness of characters can be accentuated, especially in certain matchups. Zoning is pretty strong in this game, and a lot of characters don't have direct answers for it without a big commitment. Not having an assist to cover you in spots also makes solo characters overly committal in a game where one touch can put you in a vortex. However, like I mentioned before, solos can still hold their own surprisingly well versus teams, and a lot of players believe that solos actually beat duos. It can even be argued that some characters benefit from going solo, like Philia or Misfortune. In fact, one of Valentine's best teams is just her by herself. So if you're someone who only likes Fukua and doesn't want to play anyone else, the option is there for you, and you can definitely win with it if you put in the time. Next, we gotta talk about duos. Duos are a nice middle ground in terms of damage and health while still being able to utilize team mechanics like assists and DHCs. The main downside of playing duos is if you lose a character, you're forced to play what is essentially a solo with less life and less damage. If you get happy birthday and double snapped early into a round, you will more than likely have to play a 1v3 where it takes two to four hits to kill each individual character. And depending on the team you play versus, you may die off the next interaction. However, duos are incredibly strong. While you may not be quite as flexible as a trio, you still get that versatility and neutral control that comes with having a team. Finally, we have trios, the ratio this game was made for. Trios are as flexible as they come and have the highest damage potential out of all three sizes. Having access to two assists in this game really helps fill the gaps in characters' game plans. As a simple example, with someone like Philia, her main weaknesses are that she has stubby range, in neutral, and she has overall low damage output. But to circumvent this, you could just build a team around her. Something like Philia Annie Robo. Robo Beam can help her get in safely during neutral, and with Annie and Robo as DHCs, her lack of damage becomes almost a non-factor. And with more characters, comes more chances to play the game. Solos can get hit once and vortex to death, and duos only have a single extra character to rely on, so having three characters can really make the difference. Now, in terms of how to actually build a team, there are many ways to go about it, but if you want to make a team beyond just picking the character you think looks cool, I recommend you figure out what you want in a team and check the Skullgirls team building guide I will have linked in the description. There is a lot that goes into making a team you want to play, and if I went over it all, we'd be here all day. So let me go over some basics to help you get started. First off, positions on a team matter quite a bit, so allow me to educate those unfamiliar with team games. Your point character is the first character up and is the most flexible position in the game. Point is the starting position on a team and will have access to the least meter resource, but will also be able to utilize two assists. 
What makes this the most flexible position is the fact that every character is stronger with two assists. So basically, any character can be a point. However, you might want to put a more selfish character up there first. A character like Beowulf doesn't contribute much of anything to society, but he also doesn't provide much support on a team. His neutral also isn't the best, so he as a character prefers to be up front where he can utilize the benefits of two assists, both to help him with neutral and set up taunts during combos. The next position on the team is mid, and what you want from a good mid is a good assist for your team and, more importantly, a good DHC soup. An example of a character that has these attributes in spades would be Umbrella. This character has a decent collection of assists that could work on pretty much any team, and her level 1 super Retina Reflector is a crazy DHC tool. On hit, it leads into a full combo, and on block, it gives you plus frames and puts your opponent in a very unfavorable position. And this works whether you DHC into or out of Umbrella. Pair this with something like Annie's Meteor Strike or Big Band's Supersonic Jazz, and you have some very belligerent tactics. Last, but certainly not least, we have the anchor position. This spot on the team is reserved for characters that have good support, decent solo play, the ability to burn meter, and a good comeback potential. Take Big Band for example. As an anchor, he has decent solo neutral since all his moves have high return, and he can call out basically anyone in the game, a plethora of amazing assists, and great comeback potential with meter since all his supers do insane damage and he's one of the few characters in the game with a usable level 5. The anchor of the team is truly your last resort so make sure you use it well. The last thing I would say before we wrap this up is you should try to think about what your team does and what you want your team to do. No team in this game is perfect and every top level team have things they do well and things they suck at. Let me give you some examples of top level teams and give you their pros and cons. Triviality runs Peacock, Robo, Squiggly, and this team is a really good neutral dominant team with strong mix up and high damage. The main issue with this team would be that the team's defense leaves a lot to be desired, and if Peacock dies early, then he's left with two characters that love having meter but don't build it very fast. Up next we have the Kill Sage's old team of Philia, Annie, and Big Band. And this team has insane rushdown and mix-up, high overall damage, and stellar defense. The problem with this team is that they build meter relatively slowly, which really sucks for Annie and Band, and they can get zoned out in neutral pretty bad, especially if you're not running H Brass on Band. This team has to commit to get in, and if they're wrong, they probably die. The last team I want to look at is the quote-unquote best team in the game, which would be Misfortune Annie Robo Fortune. This team is pretty messed up, I gotta be honest with you. Every time I wanna screw around, you know, have fun, oh, I love this game, Skullgirls, my favorite game, I hop on Quick Match, and these cat girls, they show up out of the woodworks, bro, and they come out and ruin my day. This team has insane mix-up, godlike neutral, untouchable defense, they get 50-50s if you block assists, that's pretty much everything you would want. However, even this team isn't without its flaws. If you take out one member of this team, it becomes substantially weaker, and if MF isn't point, they pretty much down a character. If you snap in Annie, kill her, then you have Robo come in with a terrible assist and an awful DHC, and the opponent is forced to swap MF in to salvage the game. Despite what many may say about the state of this game's balance, I wholeheartedly believe that you can pick a team you genuinely want to play and still have the capacity to win any event. So go out. Have fun making teams, just don't be that guy that picks up a game called Skullgirls and makes a team with the only two dudes in the roster. Everyone's gonna judge you. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll see y'all next time. If you have any more questions about team building, I recommend you hit up the Skullgirls Discord or check out the team building document I have linked down in the description. It's super helpful, give you like a mini guide on all the characters and tell you like how they fit on a team. Uh, but yeah, I'll see y'all next time.